Today, I want to let you in on what I think is the best budget street photography camera out there. And you can get this camera for only a little bit more than a Leica battery would cost you. It's the Sony RX100 Mark II. While it may not be the newest, the most prestigious or talked about camera in the market, it's hands down all you need for great street photography. And I'll tell you why. Now let me share with you the reason I've bought this wonderful lightweight camera and why 200 euros or dollars is crazily cheap for what you get here. I want to be honest with you. I tend to lose things. I've lost a Ricoh GR2, I've lost camera batteries, and it seems that I lose at least one lens cap every few weeks. This happens when I have a busy day and also want to do street photography. In short, when I have too much other stuff and camera gear as well with me. When I think of a lightweight, great street photography camera, the Ricoh GR3 would be the obvious choice. But it costs 1000 euros or dollars and that is for folks like me who tend to lose things on a regular basis a bit too much. Or if you just want to try out street photography, you don't want to spend a fortune in the beginning. I also feel better when I am visiting a music festival or a political demo with this camera than with my more expensive gear. Let me introduce you to this fabulous bargain. Introduced in 2013, 11 years ago, uh, F1.8 lens, one inch sensor, 20 megapixels, optical image stabilization, a built-in flash, a three inch tilt screen, a 28 to 100 millimeters lens and 3.6 times optical zoom are still pretty good benchmarks today for such a bargain. And it weighs only 280 grams, so you don't even notice it when you are carrying it in your pocket. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a viewfinder, but the same applies for the Ricoh GR and with the Fuji X100 V, I also mainly use the screen not the viewfinder, so that's perfectly fine for me. What I really love about this camera is that it fits perfectly in my hand. Although it's lightweight, it doesn't feel cheap or plasticky. The camera has different programs for every occasion. I prefer aperture priority on cloudy days and shutter priority for contrasty light and shadow images like the ones I am showing you right now. On bright sunny days it tends to overexpose a bit when shooting automatic, so I prefer to have full control by shooting, well, semi-manual. Fully manual is from what I know, please correct me if I'm wrong, not possible. With a wrist strap attached I am always prepared to react fast if an interesting situation occurs or if I see an interesting character on the street. The camera is small and inconspicuous and makes really nice images. You can shoot JPEGs only, RAW or both. When turned on, the camera is almost immediately accessible in just a bit of over one second, which is great because in street photography you need to be fast. Even at ISO 3200 when shooting at night, there is almost no noise visible, which is impressive. But well, you shouldn't have a shaky hand. All in all, because of the one inch sensor, it has a pretty good low light performance. After shooting, you can edit the photos in camera with Capture One for Sony on your phone or in your usual editing software. I still stick with Lightroom here. The resolution is absolutely good enough to make nice prints. You can also record videos in full HD up to 50 frames and 28 megabits per second with built-in video stabilization, which is a nice to have, although I, I would prefer it to use it for photos, not for video. The stabilization is simply not good enough to film without a tripod here. For street photography, it's simply a lightweight and fast, always in your pocket camera. I really won't dismiss it because it's already 11 years old. If this camera would be a good red wine, 
now would be the time to enjoy. 